Shivaya, Om Namah 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 Shivaya, Om Namah
ओम नम शिवाय 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 हय नम पार्वती पत हर हर हरिओ वी हैव चोजन दिस वंडरफुल प्लेस फॉर दिस रिट्रीट द टेक्स्ट chosen for this also is very interesting and very beautiful patanjali yog sutra that way we have uh, four chapters in this yog sutra but we will be taking only the first chapter which is the essence of the entire yog sutra if you can understand and follow that first chapter that itself will be sufficient we have uh, so many uh, spiritual literature the most ancient are our vedas which are the most amazing spiritual literature in the world it's the most ancient nowhere in this world we have anything more ancient than this rigveda yajurved samaved atharva ved but apart from this uh, vedas we also have what we call the puranas then the itihas like the mahabharat ramayan and other uh, text which are uh, helpful in understanding vyakaran jyotish then dhanurved and stapatya ved and all those things architecture and all but uh, apart from this we have what we call the darshan shastra it's the most amazing thing which our rishis have given the vedas are there but from the vedas and from the the their own experience the rishis have given us what we call darshan darshan literally means to see they have given us ability to see see what see ourselves see the world and see god they have given us few visions of seeing because the main funda the main fundamental concept is that yatha drishti tatha srishti that as your vision so is your world or so is your experience that is the most fundamental thing the the rishi says that your vision determines the world and your experience worldly people think that the world determines my experience it is not really the world which determines what type of experience i will have good or bad it is my vision which determines the good and bad experience and this is everyone's uh, experience also that situation remaining same 10 people let us say facing same situation or similar situation will experience 10 different things and very famous example is there in our uh, ramayan when ramchandra ji was told that you will be given the you will be the uh, you will be given the kingdom tomorrow special program rajya abhishek he was pleased he was very happy also that yes my father chose me and i can have this opportunity to serve my people but next day he was again called emergency meeting he was told that uh, some change in plan 
that instead of kingdom you will have to go to the forest not for one or two days not for retreat like but you will have to go for 14 years and not with all the princely facilities but you will have to wear the dress of a hermit and go and live life in the forest for 14 years without entering a city and then after that you can come back and why because the mother kai kai felt like that whatever her reasons so when ramchandra ji heard about this again there was no depression or no change in his his feelings he could he was un, his uh, even tulsidas ji describes that when he heard about it there was no change in his expression that prasannata had not dropped even a little bit people saw him entering the uh, the what you call the palace very prasanna very with great peace and joy and he came out walked out same peace and joy was there not a trace of uh, depression or dejection or sadness so later on somebody asked him that uh, how come you could maintain this balance because generally we don't if somebody even promises that aaj party ke liye aa jana in last minute if they say to so cancel ho gaya party whole day i upwas kar liya and i wanted to i looking forward for that you feel irritated but here the kingdom was offered and taken back so somebody asked him the what is your vision of life how how could you could maintain that balance he said that uh, when i heard about this that i was given this kingdom of forest he said that is also kingdom to me and i immediately thought the great opportunity i will get of meeting the holy people the rishis who are staying in the forest and the great opportunity i will get of listening to them and being in their company and serving them that is one thing another that i will be obeying the words of my parents it is a great opportunity for me that they have chosen me and they have spoken to me they have told me to do this and i will do it it is a it's a great thing so he was very happy deeply happy why he was happy because of his vision situation is same if another person was there he would have been depressed so the rishi says that you don't try to change the world world will have its own rules and regulation and it is controlled by so many factors you will not be able to change the world at will we may keep on trying but it doesn't even dasharath maharaj wanted ramchandra ji to become the king and the great king like dasharath maharaj whatever he decides he could do it but he could not do this it was beyond his control what happened and that can a person anybody can change the plan of a of a person mantara sitting there she changed the whole plan she rewrote the the script but ramchandra ji whatever be the situation he had learned to remain calm peaceful and happy why because he had a wonderful vision what we call darshan of life hmm. so that is what the rishis have given us there are six very famous or very traditional visions which the rishis have given which are called shat darshan and later on also many great mahatmas have come they have also given their vision 
so we have what we call the traditional darshanas like the vaisheshik nyaya sankhya yoga purva mimamsa uttar mimamsa these are the six traditional darshanas apart from that we have charvak darshan we have bauddha darshan we have jain darshan indian i am talking about so this uh, when we study this uh, uh, vision of this great rishis who have given us these darshanas we adopt it in our life we will be able to deal with the various ups and downs which comes in our life we will be able to also eliminate what we really want to eliminate permanently and that is our sorrow the main thing which is troubling all humanity in fact all beings are sorrow suffering suffering is there darshanas help us to deal with this suffering even religions they give various reasons and various uh, uh, ways of looking at it even like christianity islam or other religions also if suffering is there they tell us how to look at it you can consider it as a gift of god or whatever various darshanas are there which help us to deal with it i remember when i was in america i was called to uh, a, a medical university and uh, various other spiritual leaders were also there from different faith jew and christians and buddhist and all islam so we were given one uh, question one of the question important question is how do you or your religion look at suffering and death because they wanted us to speak to the doctors and who were dealing with not only people who were suffering but also those who were near death or what you call uh, fatal illnesses and they had to face death because they found that that faith determines how they deal with it disease remaining same people from different faith face it differently some are quite cheerful about it some become totally hyper depends on what type of vision we have towards it is very interesting so all of us we want to be free of our sorrows or suffering atyantika dukha nivrutti dukha nivrutti means freedom from dukha and really what we want is atyantika dukha nivrutti means completely free from sorrow we want to be freedom from sorrow completely that is one thing and another thing we is a bonus if we can get is uh, paramananda prapti if suppose two things are there happiness and sorrow freedom from sorrow and getting happiness we will prefer dukha to chhod do when beggar came to someone's house for asking for something and then the dog started barking and chasing him he said please don't give me anything but please control your dog many people are there if you cannot give me joy it's fine but don't give me sorrow even from own children sometimes we tell ki baba aap apna rakh do apne paas don't trouble me you need not give me joy but don't give me sorrow so freedom from sorrow is the first thing which we want and then if we can get permanent happiness that is something most wonderful so our great thinkers of the past they thought about this only and they uh, all of them many of them gave this vision different visions so whether it is uh, 
uh, what you call Vaisheshik philosophy or Nyaya or Sankhya, Yoga, Purva Mimamsa, Uttar Mimamsa, they have given us the vision. If you hold on to this understanding of yourself, the world and God, if you have this particular understanding, then you will be able to deal with the sorrows. It will not give you that sorrow and you will get happiness. Some of the philosophies or the vision promised that you will become free completely of sorrow and you will get permanent happiness. Even Charvak philosophy, which is a materialistic philosophy, they also, the main aim is to become free of sorrow, which many people adopt it. Free of sorrow and some joy. But that freedom from sorrow also becomes, as Anand said, freedom from sorrow also becomes temporary and joy also becomes temporary. So it is not really a good thing. So this uh, traditional uh, darshanas which we have, six darshanas, they are like the six possible good vision which we can have. They are like mathematics. You cannot have uh, seven, eight, nine. They are actually, these six are good possible vision which can we can have to face the various ups and downs of our life. So uh, most of us are, are studying what we call the Vedantic Vedanta Darshan. Huh. Many of you are expert in Vedanta Darshan, which is given to us by, by whom? Huh? Ved Vyas. Ved Vyas ji has uh, given the Vedanta Darshan, which is based on the Upanishad, which are the end portion of the Vedas. Based on those Upanishad, Ved Vyas ji, he came up with this Vedanta Darshan and he gave that Darshan in 555 Sutras, which we call the Brahma Sutra. Athato Brahma Jidnyasa Janmadhyasya Yataha And uh, uh, so on, these 555 sutras are there which tells us that uh, if you study the, listen to the Vedas, the Upanishads, Shravan, then contemplate on it and meditate on it, you will be able to recognize your real nature as Brahma. And once you recognize yourself as Brahma, and once you know this whole world is just an illusion, you will become free of all sorrow and will gain a permanent happiness. We also have this uh, Jaimi, uh, what you call the Purva Mimamsa, given by Jaimini Rishi, which is based on the, the initial portions of the Vedas, and which talks about Karma Kand, which says that if you perform various types of rituals in a particular way, you will become free of sorrow. And later on you can also get nice Swarga and all, and will be very happy there. Hmm. Others will say, oh, Swarga Vasi ho gaye. So, there are this uh, Karma Kand or the, that Darshan, Mimamsa, Purva Mimamsa it is called. Then we have that Vaisheshik and Nyaya. Hmm. But we will be uh, studying here the Yoga Darshan. It is a different darshan than Vedanta. So those who have been studying Vedanta for a long time, they might find it uh, that lot of terms are there which are new or which are differently defined, which are defined differently. So you have to keep aside your Vedantic thing little bit and try to understand 
the yoga darshan from the yoga darshan standpoint only because it's a different vision is being given it's like you want to look at the moon one person is looking from the let us say from a high tall mountain another person is at some other place and looking at the moon their vision both of them are looking at the moon but it is different similarly this uh, yoga darshan is a different uh, uh, what you call that darshan altogether and which is also based on sankhya so sankhya and yoga go together so we will also try to understand this sankhya and then we will be able to comprehend this yoga in fact it is the most ancient philosophy or the darshan of our our uh, of india much the oldest is the sankhya and then came the yoga and the importance of sankhya and yoga is mentioned very much in bhagavad gita and also in other uh, text bhagwan krishna talks a lot of sankhya and yoga yoga that word has become so famous hmm so we will try to understand in this few days the yoga darshan and as a support for that yoga darshan we will also try to understand the sankhya on which it is based so this uh, yoga actually sankhya is like a theory and yoga is like practice sankhya will tell you what how where what is the main structure of it hmm from tomorrow morning i will start huh? so now i will just go round and round and yoga is the technique by which we can experience or directly get established in the truth revealed in sankhya and i tell you it's a most fascinating uh, this darshan this yoga darshan and the uh, patanjali rishi who has given us this uh, in a sutra form is the most scientific he was the maybe the first he yeah the first great psychologist you can say and a great master and he has given us this darshan in a most scientific way it's like mathematics it's like mathematics 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 means there that you cannot have anything else you cannot say 2 plus 2 is 5 in our you know according to me it is 5 according to me it is 10 no it is precise therefore that it is based on sankhya which also means sankhya sankhya means number it is many things are mentioned as number only how many uh, this purusha is there prakriti how many of them are there numbers are mentioned also number means it is more precise samyak kya kya means to know or knowledge precise knowledge proper knowledge and uh, yoga systematic technique of uh, contemplation and meditation and recognizing it because after studying everything everything whatever theory we study the ultimate uh, the the fuller of all the theory is to then experience what is said it's like somebody describing in detail gulab jamun ki what are the different types of gulab jamuns are there and what is the best gulab jamun and how it should be made how it should be eaten if it is warm it is nice fresh form you can how it should be held in your hand and smell if you talk about it for even 10 hours in fact 10 hours will be too much even for few hours people will get exhausted actually will say are baba haath mein de do ha kitna bologe aap similarly if the uh, will listen to the upanishads and everything that you are that brahma again we go back 
with the side face only. Even whether we hear it for one hour or whether we hear it for one year or ten years, it doesn't make any difference in our life if it is not directly experienced. It doesn't matter whether the rishis have experience or teacher has experience. Unless I have experienced it, it makes no difference for me. So yoga is a technique by which we can directly experience that state of enlightenment. What the Sankhya is pointing out or what the Vedanta is talking about can be experienced by following the systematic technique of this yoga. Yoga, one meaning of yoga is to join, to yoke. So we can join or we can reunite with our own uh, supreme nature. At present we are as though dealing from ourselves, but with the help of this yogic technique we will join to that nature. In this first chapter which we will study is called the Samadhi Pad. There are only 51 sutras and in this 51 sutras very systematically Patanjali Rishi gives us the technique. It's most amazing. I have not seen anything more amazing than this. Mind blowing as they say, literally. It means the mind is blown off mind gets blown off. So I am warning you that after the camp you will have to go home without your mind. <laughs> People might be saying same thing now also to you, to mindless, eh? but later on it will become a fact. <laughs> so we will, um, we will study this text we will start from tomorrow morning 7.30 to 8.45 we'll have the first class. So I invoke the blessings of Pujya Gurudev whose blessings are always on us. Pujya Guruji who has uh, always been very kind and whatever I'm teaching actually I've learned from him. And I invoke the blessings of all the great masters even including Patanjali Maharaj. I invoke the blessings of all these devatas to make this camp successful in all ways. So let us conclude with a prayer. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om